Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where I get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nine seven in class again today. How have you been? On today's video, we are going to show you how to generate heat maps using an ArcGIS Pro. Now, um, in GIS, heat maps are used to visualize and then analyze them um, spatial distribution and density of data over a geographical area now by analyzing visualizing the density what we and the spatial distribution and density rather of data what they're trying to talk about is that you know we have some data here that represents forgery check like um, white collar crimes you know the data was um, shared in one of the trainings i attended we also want to state emphatically that we do not support white collar crimes and we are not in any way in support of the forgery checks we actually got this data from the desktop um, GIS Fall 2022 GIS um, Pace University training that I attended. So the the shape file that was shared contains um, different types of crimes and different classes of crimes. So I actually extracted them um, white collar crimes and then forgery checks under white collar crimes. So we do not support in any scale at any point in any location where anybody or any group of people. Um, actually perpetuate this crime right because now this is just for educational purpose and educational purpose alone so we want to know the locations where these white collar yeah these and um, white collar crimes that um these forgery checks that are under white collar crimes are more prominent where they are more intense right good by using what heat map so we have actually located them you can see these points these points represents where they are however we want to also determine the intensity so that's what generally we are trying to achieve on today's video so the first thing is that um selecting the the layer we come to appearance so under appearance we use the same um, symbology drop down and then we click on what heat map good now you can see the heat map has been generated right good covering those different points and by merely looking at it you can see there's a scale the description of the scale shows that the colors at the top we have them um, sparse and then down towards the end we have dense right good so the color ramp has shown that the colors where you have almost white or maybe uh, no colors are having lower um forgery check white color crimes then coming down where you have um is it almost um yellow you are having what i what white um color crime that are forgery checks that are other what white color crimes so now this is just a simple representation of what the intensity right good of this particular type of crime now let's just zoom in a bit you know by this visualization we have seen that yes the surrounding here or let's say this part of the data contains what um, high intensity however let us now try to reduce our transparency to see because you know if you are working with um, accident data let's use that for example you know accident data the intensity of accidents will likely be on the road and maybe if you try to investigate more find out that perhaps the design of the road or maybe the way the road is being used the road is bad or something so we are going to reduce the transparency of this um our um, hotspot to let's say 50 percent then we'll see the because we have rightly overlaid our data over what um, a base map we are using the world street map so we are now going to zoom in to see the location where we have discovered that what there are what there is a high intensity of this um forgery check under what the white color crime good and then by further analysis you can actually discover that um, these kind of um, white collar crimes are most prominent um, where we have um, banks and financial institutions commercial and retail areas residential areas transit hubs and you know some other similar locations so these are or let's say these are some of the ways yeah these are some of the ways that you can gain general insights to the distribution or let's say the intensity of our what some of those your hotspots are what are 
um, distributed on your map. Now let us look at um, some of the parameters. We have the heat map. We also have the radius. Now when you alter the radius, let's um, change this to 100. Good. By the radius, let's see what we can get. It typically refers to the size or the area, the size of the area or distance around each point that is considered when generating the heat map. So if you have what higher radius, you cover wider distances and when you reduce it to the default 25, you cover lower distances. So by working with, by altering or modifying the the value of your radius you see how it also affects what the visualization of your data now when we have reduced it to 25 we saw that we were able to visualize what the density more right good or let's say better than while it was what at 100 so the weight field perhaps maybe if you want to assign weights to the different occurrences and then there's a particular field for it under your attribute table you can rightly do that then the color scheme maybe the the color ramp or maybe that will be your scale you can let's show names you can decide to use any other what color ramp that you feel would best uh, visualize your data right let's see this one good so depending on what you want to use to visualize your data you can actually play around with the color ramp to see how what it helps you understand your data now the method under method we have what constant and dynamic the density defi definition remains constant to compare different areas at the same scale however for the dynamic the density definition is recalculated dynamically as you change the scale and extent so what that means is that when it is constant when you zoom in the density definition remains the same however when it is under dynamic the density definition is recalculated dynamically as you change the scale so when you zoom in or maybe if the scales are changed you now see that as we have changed it to dynamic as we keep zooming in we are seeing what where we have more intensity compared to when it was what under constant where we add just the first recalculated one that covers what the higher area or let's say the broader extent right good so now i'll prefer keeping it under dynamic so that when we zoom into maybe um, locations of interest we can be able to actually identify where most of those um, incidents yeah where most of those incident hotspots are so by zooming in we have been able to define that there's a particular point here where we have what quite high intensity right good now this shows to some extent that maybe this particular building would likely what have um, a high intensity of this particular um, um white color crime that um, we are referring to so um to add we do not um, in any way or at any point support um, these kind of crimes the data was actually gotten from the desktop js fall 2022 from around um, august till um, november 2022 so that's very important to add to the context of what this video so we are trying to use the data to um, understand them um, how you can create it maps using what um, um arcgis pro so we do not support any form of forgery checks or maybe white collar crimes in any scale at any point in any location thanks for coming to class um, we hope we have been able to show you how to use them um, hotspot to visualize what your data so remember it can be any data maybe accident maybe crime um death rate death rate you know any data that has to do with um, how intense yeah you can have some phenomena in any location and maybe you want to visualize it so we are going to see you on the next one ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye